Welcome to this session on Creative Commons licenses. These are something which a lot of people have probably heard of or, or seen, but they might not be sure exactly what they are and how they can be used. As with all things related to copyright, they're actually quite a lot simpler than they, they might look to be at first glance. The key is to think of the licenses a little bit like instructions in a cookbook, in that you can put anything together as long as you start with the right ingredients. And you may notice some foodie examples as we go through this session. So just a brief plan for the session, we're going to introduce the licenses, talk a little bit about their history, break them down into their individual component parts, so hopefully you understand how they go together, and then think a little bit about how they can be used both by those who want to, to create material and share it, and those who want to use it if they find it online. So the first topic we need to cover is actually a bit of a step back. We need a basic understanding of copyright. So copyright and Creative Commons are actually meant to work together rather than against each other. So when we talk about one, we need to make sure that we have an understanding of the other. So copyright is an automatic legal right, which is part of a larger suite of something called intellectual property rights that you may have heard of. Things like um, uh, trademarks and stuff like that. These rights and laws uh, govern how the outputs of a creator or an author, such as a journal article or a book or a painting, can be used by other people. And copyright law exists for a couple of really important reasons. It offers an incentive to creators to encourage them to produce new works by giving them the chance to gain both financial reward and um, reputational reward from their works. And the law also offers the creators a certain level of protection by helping to ensure that other people don't claim credit for work that they produced. Copyright is automatically granted once an original work, meeting the criteria you see on the right hand side of the screen there, has been produced in a fixed form. So it doesn't protect ideas, something has to be produced in a fixed form. So for example, if you, you write a journal article, whether you type it or write it, or you draw a picture or paint a painting or record a narration for a, a set of slides, that's producing it in a fixed form. Copyright is divided into two main areas which is important to understand. Economic rights and moral rights and this um, becomes important when we're thinking about Creative Commons. So economic rights are basically the right to make money from a work or by producing copies, renting it out, creating a new version of something, like an adaptation, so um, a film version of a book, for example, or showing a work to the public. These rights will belong to the original person or persons who created whatever the thing is, unless they're either sold or given away. When we say given away, we typically we talk about um, things like publication transfer agreements, copyright transfer agreements that you might sign when publishing with a, a journal or a book publisher you're likely to sign your economic right in that work away. But unless you uh, do this, they remain with you. In contrast to this, the moral rights will always stay with the creator and they're designed to protect the reputation of the creator and give them the credit they're due for producing that work in the first place. So you may have seen on the, the back of a title page of a book, for example, Jane Austen reserves the right to be um, known as the author of this work. That is, in this case, the estate of Jane Austen asserting her moral right to be identified as the person who created that work in the first place. So although copyright law is often seen quite in a quite negative way, it's designed to prevent some things, it's as much about helping to advance knowledge as it is about anything else. So it aims to promote the use of different materials in a lawful way that helps to protect the rights of the people who have made the content, but it still allows other people to build on this content. People often think that create, uh, copyright is all about what you can do wrong or what you shouldn't do, but that actually isn't the case, and this is kind of where Creative Commons fits in. So now that we all hopefully understand a little bit more about copyright, what exactly do we mean when we talk about Creative Commons? 
So Creative Commons licenses are designed to work with and complement the existing copyright laws rather than override them in any way. Copyright is a historic protection which was designed basically for a world where knowledge was only shared in a certain way. So it was printed and sold or loaned out through a library. That was, that was the only options that you had. As with everything else, technology has moved on, so the way we share information has also moved on, and it's become a lot easier for creators and authors of content to share their work online. This is really great, but it often results in a bit of a conflict with copyright restrictions, because once something is online, it can really easily be shared, and it's really easy to lose track of who it belongs to or what the copyright permissions actually are and that's when you might start getting into dangerous territory. The safest thing to do in these circumstances is to assume that whatever the thing is is under copyright and therefore people can't use it, but in the real world we know that this doesn't stop a lot of potentially illegal use which you could get into trouble for. On the kind of other side of this you have people who put their content out there online and they'd be really happy if people used it because that's what they wanted to share it for but people are overly cautious because they've had the copyright message drummed into them and they don't want to use something unless they explicitly know that they can. So the idea behind Creative Commons was that in a world where we're trying to promote and develop and build on our collective knowledge, there has to be a better way of doing things. So the Creative Commons organisation as a thing was actually created to help dress, address these kind of tensions and as a result of some other key copyright developments. So in 1998 in the US the Copyright Term Extension Act extended the term of copyright for every work um, by an extra 50 years to bring it in line with other countries where the default term of copyright was the lifetime of the author plus 70 years so they were trying to kind of align things a little bit. After this the work would then pass into the public domain and other people would be able to use it freely. So there was a man called Lawrence Lessig who is a professor of law at Stanford University in the US and he actually thought that this was unconstitutional, this extension, because it meant that works were kept out of the public domain for longer. His argument was that this actually stifled the very creativity that copyright was actually meant to help promote. So he uh, tried to take the US government to court in 2001. That court case actually failed but it did lead to the creation of both Creative Commons as an organisation and the licences themselves. The licences were actually launched a year later in 2002 as a way for creators to specify how they wanted their work to be used in a simple and easy to understand way that was consistent with copyright law. If you attach a Creative Commons licence, it means that the creator retains the right to their work but allows um, the creator to clearly outline to others how they would like that work to be used. So in theory, this simplifies the process of building on existing knowledge and creating new knowledge from that. The licenses themselves are regularly updated and the latest iteration, which is version 4.0, was launched in 2013 and they're working on version 5.0 as we speak. At this point, it's quite important to reiterate that these licenses sit alongside copyright law and copyright exceptions, like using materials for educational purposes within a defined educational environment. They're simply designed to work with existing rules in order to make things easier to understand. So I think most people would recognise the individual components of a Creative Commons licence if they saw them, but how do these actual components all fit together to create the licence that we know? So you can think of each licence a little bit like a cake. It's made up of various layers, three to be exact. So at the base you have the, the human readable plain language version of the licence, which is the bit that makes it easy to understand. In official terms, this is called the common deed, and it's probably the bit that most people are familiar with, the sentence that says, this work is licensed under Creative Commons, whatever the license is, by whoever, the, whoever created it. The kind of jam in the middle, or whatever filling you like of our cake, 
is the legal code. So this is the legally enforceable part of the license, which can and has been used in court if necessary. I think a lot of people think that because Creative Commons licenses can really easily be accessed online, and I'll talk about that a bit further on, that they don't actually mean anything because they're so easy to get and so easy to apply, but they are legally enforceable licenses. They were written by that. They were created by a law professor. So the idea of them is to make sure that things don't progress as far as court, but on the odd occasion that, that has gone that far, these licenses can be relied on as a defence in court if you've um, done something that someone else says you shouldn't. The final layer of a cake, the cherry on top of this one, is the machine readable layer, which is aimed at computer software and apps and is basically just easy for websites and search engines to understand. So that helps them if they're um, trying to index all openly licensed content, they know what they're looking for and how to find it. So what you see on the screen is the individual elements of a license, the different um, parts that make up each one. You've probably seen at least some of the symbols on the screen, even if you're not completely familiar with what they all mean. There are six main Creative Commons licenses, and they're designed to be completely customizable, depending on which of the four elements that you see on the screen you include. So all of the licenses are made up of a combination of these four elements. So top left attribution, each license has to acknowledge the creator of the work using that element. That's a core in all of the licenses, or the main licenses anyway. This is only removed if the work is um, put straight into the public domain with something called a CC0 license, or if the creator waives their right to attribution, but those are a couple of extra steps you have to take. In all the main licenses, attribution is a key part. Moving across to the right, there's the no derivatives element with the equal symbol there. And this specifies that there can be no public changes made to the original work. So that includes things like adaptations and remixes. And this element is part of two of the main licenses out of the six. Moving down to the bottom left with the, the dollar symbol there is the non-commercial element. And that's included when only the original creator is allowed to make any money out of their work. So anyone who uses the original as a basis of something new, they can do that, but they can't sell it or otherwise use it for a commercial purpose, like putting an image on a t-shirt. Non-commercial is also part of two of the main licenses. And then finally, in the bottom right, with the kind of uh, circle arrow symbol there, the final element is share alike. And this specifies that any new creations made from existing materials that are released under Creative Commons must be shared under the same license as the original work was. So, for example, if the original work was under a non-commercial license and you've done something to it, you, can't, you have to share your work under a non-commercial license as well. And that's to stop um, licenses being made more restrictive and people kind of getting around it that way. So the result is a license that's been made to order, and I tend to compare it to a, a burger that you might get at your, your favourite fast food restaurant where you can specify exactly what kind of topping that you want. So the restaurant will stock um, all the different kinds of ingredients, but depending on what you like and what your preferences are, you can put different things on it. So the only thing that each one has to include is some type of burger patty. So whether that be um, meat or vegan or vegetarian or whatever you want, it has to include um, some type of burger or it's not a burger. And this is the CC by element in this analogy. It has to include that. But you can put all sorts of different toppings on top. So if you want to make sure the work isn't used commercially, you can add the cheese or the non-commercial element as we have it here. And then if you want, you can top it off with bacon, which is the share-alike element, to make sure that anyone adapting that work shares the new creation under the same license. So you kind of build your own burger, or build your own license, and then that is the result that you see on the screen there. A Creative Commons license with all the different elements which can be applied to the work, and that outlines exactly what that creator wants others to do with that work. Different works by the same creator can be licensed in different ways, depending on how they want it shared, 
and the same is often true of different works from the same publisher. So just because you chose um, the license on the screen there, CC by NC FA for one thing, doesn't mean you have to put that on absolutely everything you do. So I've talked a lot about the six main licenses and these are they on the screen. It excludes CC0, which is um, sometimes known as putting works in the public domain, which means um, no restrictions at all. This is something which happens after a certain period of time anyway when you're free to use the work. But you can also, as a creator, attach a CC0 license to material and make it available straight away. So although the licenses uh, that you see on the screen are quite visually similar, you might see that each one is made up of slightly different elements. And these are arranged on the screen from top left to bottom right, from the least to the most restrictive licenses. So starting at the top left, I'll just give you a, a quick talk through them. We have attribution, and that means that those using the works are free to distribute, remix, and build upon the original work as long as they credit the author of the original creation. So the wording I'm using here is actually the wording from Creative Commons. Then the next one down, CC by FA, is attribution share alike. People are able to remix or build upon a work and use it commercially if they want to, as long as they credit the original creator and share the work they create under the same license as the original. So that's that share alike element kicking in there. Underneath that you have attribution non-commercial with the little dollar symbol. So again, people can adapt and remix the work, but they can't do it for commercial gain. Then um, we move on to the next one, which is attribution no derivatives. So this work can be shared both commercially and non-commercially, as long as the work is unchanged and the original author is credited. It's worth remembering that it's a little bit confusing, but people can actually change your work under this license for their own private use, but they're not allowed to share it in any way with anyone else, which somewhat defeats the object, but anyway. Then we have attribution non-commercial share alike. You can see we're starting to get a bit of a mouthful now. Under this license, work can be remixed and built upon non-commercially, as long as the original creator is given credit and the new work is licensed under identical terms to the original. And then finally, at the bottom right hand side there, you've got the most uh, restrictive open license, which is attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, CC by NC, ND. This specifies that works can be downloaded and shared, as long as they're not changed in any way, not used commercially, and the original creator is given credit. So those are kind of the main licenses that you might come across. So having talked a lot about the importance of choosing the right license and um, putting it on your material, unfortunately the choice of license is not always up to the person that created it, especially if you're a researcher. So different research funders and different publishers, they might mandate that outputs they're involved in have a certain open license attached to them. And if you are producing work for one of these funders, you need to double check your conditions and make sure that you're not in conflict with the publishers in any way there. So we've talked a lot about what the licenses are and uh, what they're made up of, but how do you researchers or other creators actually use Creative Commons licenses? So this next section, we're going to look at how you will go about licensing work for others to use and how you, as a user of work, can find and make use of openly licensed content. So we use a lot of words like licensing and copyright, which make people think they're dealing with something really complex, but it doesn't have to be complicated. In practice, it's really easy to license work under Creative Commons. You just follow the three simple steps that are on the screen there. So the Creative Commons website, which the link is on the screen, has a handy license selection selector tool, which will talk anyone who wants to use a license through the process of choosing one that is going to be suitable for what they want to do. Basically asks you two or three questions. Do you want people to do this with your work? Do you want to allow people to do that with your work? Yes or no? And at the end, it gives you a license 
lets you download the machine readable code, gives you the licensing statement and the image of the license if you want to put that on any of the materials and make sure everything is displayed as it should. Really simple, really easy. As long as a Creative Commons license is attached in some way, then the work is protected under Creative Commons. You do have to remember that CC licenses are there to complement copyright law, and so they're only going to be valid until the copyright in the work expires. But for most people, that's quite a way off. Step two is to add a statement to the work explaining that it's openly licensed, which license is attached and the details of the creator. So the wording that Creative Commons themselves recommends is what you see on the screen um, under number two there. It's important to mention the type of license that you're attaching and the version number because the rules between different versions do vary slightly, they change with each one. In general, it's best to use the latest version of the license that you want to attach because that will have the most up-to-date rules and kind of goes without saying that if you want credit, you need to put your name on it. So the final step is something that people don't usually consider when uh, doing this kind of thing, but it's really important to think about how open you are actually making the work. So adding a license is great, it's really helpful, but it isn't of much use if there are other blocks to using your creation. So think about using open formats rather than proprietary software so more people can access it. So it's, it's great releasing something as a Word document, but if you don't have Word, it can be a bit, bit hard. Sometimes software isn't compatible, whereas something like a PDF is fairly generic. Most people can get access to it also need to make sure that you uh, don't upload it to a platform which uses any kind of digital rights management that can stop people actually using the work and building on it in certain ways. It's important to remember that once a Creative Commons license has been attached it can't be revoked but there are some options that are open to creators if they decide they're not happy and this is the question that we get asked a lot. So you as a creator can take the work in question offline and or then re-upload it with a different license, but there's no such thing as removing something completely from the internet. If someone has already gone out and found the work under its original license, then they're technically not breaking any rules to use it under that original license, no matter what you have decided to do to it later. So for example, if you uploaded something and then you decided you didn't want people making money out of it, you took, the non you took it down, put a non-commercial element on it later, but someone had found it under the original very open license, which allowed commercial use, then there's really not much you can do about it. So it's really, really important to think the decision through before you apply the license in the first place. So the permanence is not the only consideration that creators need to think about when they license their work. Some types of format aren't actually appropriate for Creative Commons licenses. It covers most things, but there are um, one or two things that it doesn't. The big one of these is software, where there are more specific software-specific uh, open licenses which you can apply, so it's better to use one of those. You need to think about whether you actually own the copyright in the first place. So are you actually allowed to add a Creative Commons license to it? They can't be added to any material that isn't already covered by copyright, such as those in the public domain. So you can't take something and then add a license to it. So you need to think that through. You need to think about whether you have the right to put a license on the specific thing. So do you have the copyright to the material you want to license? you can't put an open license on material that you yourself don't own the rights to or where the rights belong to someone else. And then finally, creators need to think about the work as a whole and which parts of that larger work they're applying a license to, and it might not be all of it. So if your work takes existing text belonging to someone else and you are responsible for adding new images to it and creating something new, then the license can only be applied to the new elements of that work and any statement that you put on it, any Creative Commons copyright statement needs to make that clear and we'll cover this in a bit more detail further on.
So how do potential users um, go about finding and using Creative Commons licensed content? So a quick online search will bring up a huge range of open content, but even if you're using proper filters, it really does pay to be cautious and always double check the license on the individual work itself. There are dedicated search engines which um, only offer open content, so things like Creative Commons Search and Wikimedia Commons that you might want to use. But again, always, always double check the uh, license of the actual thing. Moving over to the right hand side of the screen, once you've found the material, it's important that it's properly attributed. There are many ways of citing material and there might be a local convention that you have to adhere to, but if it isn't, the tassel method on the screen there is one of the best. So the title, the author, the source and the license. So for example, if you wanted to attribute this session, you would say no more about Creative Commons by uh, the Moore Library, University of Cambridge, is licensed under CC BY 4.0 license. That includes all of the relevant information so that others can locate and correctly attribute the work if they need to. You could, uh, in the middle there, use material that's registered as CC0 or public domain material. This is not under a license, but is instead freely available in the public domain. It's free to use and build upon without attribution, or, but if you do know the details of the creator, then it's, it's still good practice to credit them. And then finally, it's quite a good idea to remember that Creative Commons licenses are designed as a way to complement copyright rather than replace it. So if your intended use of materials falls under any existing copyright exceptions or limitations, then this does override the, the CC license. One of the major sources of confusion about using Creative Commons content comes when someone is pulling it all together or remixing it to create something new. And that's actually something which is fundamental to using openly licensed material. So a collection and a remix are two different things. And the foodie example that you see on the screen helps illustrate the key differences. In a collection, as on the left, separately licensed works can be brought together. So, for example, a collection of openly licensed poetry can be brought together to create a new online resource. Each work is separately licensed, and even when they're brought together, each piece retains its own individual identity. So, in our example here, it's the TV dinner on the left. The meat doesn't mix with the peas, and the potatoes don't touch the gravy. And I have no idea what that other brown blob at the top is, and I really don't want to know. The license of each individual element remains, and these have been clearly indicated. Although the collection as a whole, that whole TV dinner, might be subject to copyright, this is only in any new contributions that are made, which would have been made in collecting it together, such as the arrangement of works or any additional content like an introduction in our poetry example. By contrast, a remix is more like the fruit smoothie that you see on the right. So individual works each have their own open license and they're brought together and mixed up to create something completely new, so like the fruit in the breakfast drink there. It's impossible when it's all been blended together to tell where one ingredient ends and another one begins. So creating a remix usually results in a work which is sufficiently original to qualify for copyright protection in its own right. Unfortunately, it's not always that clear cut. Another complication is the rules around which licenses are compatible, so which ones you can actually move together, so which different flavours you can combine, if you like, in the smoothie. There is a really handy table on the Creative Commons website, and I'd recommend looking at that because it, it gives you a kind of drop down as to which materials work together and why. I should also say I did not come up with this example that is on the screen. It was um, developed by someone called Nate Angel, which is why there's all those credits on the bottom there so you can see where everything came from. And also a handy link to a blog post where he talks about all this process in more depth. So it would be really, really good if everyone followed the rules of uh, 
Creative, Co um, Creative Commons, but unfortunately sometimes things go wrong. There are many content creators who would like to use open licenses, but are understandably quite worried about how it will impact the use of their work and how they can ensure that people observe the rules they've set out via a certain license. Unfortunately, it's just a bit of a fact of sharing that you won't be able to protect it at all times. Once something is online, there's only so much that you can actually do with it. You kind of have to release it into the wild with as much protection as you can, but that's all you can do. However, on the screen there are a few reassurances for people who might be worried in response to a few of the common questions that we usually get about this area. So creators can choose not to be associated with their materials or object to any use of their materials which they strongly disagree with. So although I've said all the way through that attribution is a fundamental ingredient in all of the licenses, creators can actually completely waive their right to attribution when releasing it publicly. In addition, if they don't like how their creation has been used or how it's been adapted, they can ask to have their name removed from that version. The underlying text of the attribution element, the kind of legal um, code that we talked about earlier, also has a clause in it which stops the name of the original creator being used to endorse or support the views expressed in any new work created from their material. If this happens, then uh, the creator can raise an official objection citing that legal clause and the law would be on their side. It's a particularly important thing to explain um, for researchers in the arts and humanities because they've raised specific concerns about the potential for their words to be twisted if their work is openly licensed. But as I said earlier, Creative Commons licenses are legal documents which can and have been used to protect the rights of the people who created the content and there are some specific protections built in. On the flip side of this, creators need to remember that as long as licensees, the people using the work, are not violating the CC license in any way, they are going to have to accept that there's a limited amount of control they have over something once it's been published and released online. This is one of the reasons why I think knowing about different licenses and educating yourself, spending time choosing the right one, is really important when you're producing content. Anyone using Creative Commons licenses needs to remember that these are legally enforceable, which will stand up in court. Broadly speaking, the, it's the open community that makes use of um, open licenses, and so they do tend to follow the rules. But there have been a couple of cases that have gone to court and the legitimacy of the licenses has never been in question. Those who violate the license have their right to use the material terminated, although under version 4.0 they have up to 30 days to correct this violation because some of them are unintentional and that takes care of most of the sort of genuine mistakes that have been made. So hopefully that has given you a bit of an overview of um, the kind of main benefits and um, things you can do with Creative Commons licenses and that they are actually a really effective way to promote the sharing and reuse of all the knowledge that's out there. For creators, they offer a chance to specify what they will allow others to do with their work whilst protecting their rights and at the same time those looking to use material have an easy way to understand how they can use what they actually find without getting in trouble and I think the more people who use Creative Commons licenses the more material will be available and hopefully as we go forward we can build on each other's knowledge. So This would be the point in the session where we would ask for any questions obviously this one is being delivered in a slightly different format but just to say that the more um, research support office email is there please do use it please do contact us you have questions about Creative Commons or you want some advice or support on this or anything else. But otherwise, thanks very much for listening and stay safe.